Hi, Carol here, and a wonderful warm welcome to my craft room. I have been waiting for this release to show you what I created from it. And I'll zoom in to show you the paper. You know I brag on LDRS Creative Paper all the time, but I won't go on and on like I did in my last tutorial. <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, it's called Seaside, yes. And in this project, while we're looking at the beautiful prints on this, the project is a recipe book. I bought a book from Beatty's. You know that I shop there for my um, office products and much of my creative products that I use on my tutorials. And I thought I was going down one of the aisles and I saw these books and they were perfect for creating with this collection and making it a recipe book. And look at these under the sea mermaid uh, stencils. Look at them. And LDRS Creative, which is Angie, she makes sure that you have some inspiration on the back of using the products. I mean, you don't just get the stencil in the mail and that's it. She gives you inspiration on the back. Now you can see all of these were well used. This is the stamp and die set that I used on the front cover of my recipe book. Inside the recipe book, I have pages with cards, and inside the cards are index files to put your recipes on. It's totally unique because I made it up myself. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you get to make cards. Look at this die. I love it. I love lighthouses. Lighthouses and I have a connection. I just They're just a lifeline for anybody out on the lakes and the seas, you know, and I, I've always had a love for that. So this collection really spoke to me. I just loved it. And I just received the dies that go with it. So no more fussy cutting for me. Um, you know my wrists and that whole story. Look at this. I mean, is this not the cutest set? I love this tree. I love this tree. Wait till you see the card. I And this, this kitchen, over the moon. Everything opens up. Look at the die. I mean, everything. It's interactive plus, and it's gorgeous. Reminds me of an Elmira wood stove I used to have up north. And here is like a picnic in the parks. It's a day in the park, it's called. The little bunnies with the tractor and all the dyes. I'm so excited about the dyes. So here it is. I'm going to share, you know, each each one I use. Slimline. I couldn't wait to get this Slimline card. And I also, because they're, right now, there isn't a die because I'm sure it would be very expensive to put together a die envelope, you know. But I did figure out an easy way of making an envelope for you for the slimline card. So I'll share that with you when I do that slimline um, card with the recipe folders in it. So I guess I'm just going to show you again the cards. I have uh, so much on my camcorder <laughs> that... I did it rather quickly there, but, oh, I mean, you have to really feel the weight of these cards. And don't they truly uh, emphasize the fact of a seaside? Look it. Angie puts everything together to, to use and interact with every uh, collection that she has. And I used all of these. It's so funny when you see the little papers that are left over. I save it all. And you know I put them in great big zip folders with each collection has their own zip folders. And then it has a little file front that I put all the teensy pieces of paper that are left over because you will use it. You will need it one time. Look at the wood grain. I used this on one of the covers, the inside cover of this recipe book. Um, I used everything. I fussy cut every image out of this one page. Every in every image and I used it to the full extent of the card uh, making that I'm doing. I, I really had, oh, I was tired when I fussy cut that, but there you have it my friends, the summer collection. 
and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I know it's long, but it will get shorter as time goes by. Oh, I'm hitting my light with this trunk. I have two massive trunks. This is the, this is the small one, and or is it the large? No, this is a small one that I have. A, I'm trying to get it on the island so you can see. I put all miscellaneous stuff for doing um, albums, projects like that, like larger projects that I can just grab them. And aren't they nice? They just seat in my craft room. And this is the small one. It was really easy. I cracked the lid. I, kneel, I knelt down on the top of it to grab something. Oh, yeah and it cracked. But it gives it the old ancient look of vintage, doesn't it? Didn't bother me at all. Nope. I didn't even put any sealer on that crack. I loved it the way it is. I might just kneel on it again. <laughs> oh, oh yes. The little birdie. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your friend. A couple of little birds I got at Michael's. Thanks for dropping by. And I know, like you know in your stash, I know what to go for when I'm looking for certain things. And I bought these little birds from Michael's. And I'm going to turn this into a seagull. Oh yes, these purple blue birds, one of them, and it's the blue one, will make it onto the project cover. And it's going to be a seagull. I mean, seaside and seagulls, they do go together, don't they? Kept this in the edit as far as doing the work of the front page, even though it's not using an extreme amount of the product, I thought you would really enjoy seeing the paper and how to put, uh, you know, take the papers, take this bird, turn it into a seagull, and make a recipe book. Uh, sky's the limit to creativity, isn't it, my friends? So I hope you don't mind that I took a, a bit of time to show you. And I had to, I'm using gesso, obviously, on our little bird. And let's just talk through it. All uh, kind of, come on, get out there, you little feather. And uh, <laughs> I don't want to bust the bird, so I grabbed my scissors. And, you know, I'm going to end up using these feathers in another project, not for this one. I went and grabbed my white feathers out of my stash because they didn't have glitter on them. I didn't want any glitter feathers. I've never seen a seagull. And I go down to the Port Coburn docks close to where we live and I watch the boats go through the docks and there's seagulls all over because there's a fish and chip store where the benches are behind us and we always get our fish and chips there. And then we sit and we watch the boats at the locks. We just enjoy the water, each other, my hubby and I. We bike down there mostly on our hardies and have a really good time uh, eating. <laughs> you know I was going to add that at the end, eating. And here's my little stash of white feathers. You have to have feathers in your stash. You never know when you're going to make a seagull, right? <laughs> yes. So... Let's carry on and have some quality fun time together making a recipe book. Now, I don't uh, use recipe books very much. I grab for my, I have a few of them, of course, uh, that my mom left to me, but uh, with her recipes in it. And um, yeah, so what I decided to do, let's move on. I turned on my compressor and I grabbed my... Copic markers and I used my um, gun, uh, my spray gun here for Copics. And I am going to co color them quickly. This is a quick way, but you know, if you don't have something like this, don't worry about it. You can just grab your LDRS Creative inks, the hybrid inks, and go over these with a soft brush and you'll get the same effect. I did this, well, mainly because I had it handy keep the compressor down by my feet. It's just a click and it's on. And it's quiet. You don't even hear it. And um, yeah, and it's easy for Copic spray, right? And you know, I had a blast making this. I have been ready to put this up. And today's the day. Today is our Dominion Day here in Canada when our country 
became a country on Dominion Day. I think it was 1867, but I'd have to look that up. Uh, yeah, so we celebrate today, and I guess it's the same as your 4th of July. But, well, it's not the same, but it is close. <laughs> yeah. So these came from my dollar store where nothing's a dollar, and I always pick up wooden alphabet dies, and you cannot, I mean, it was like a dollar fifty for about, um, I don't know, ten letters per little container spot there, so you can't beat that, uh, yeah, and then I'm going to take my handy dandy gesso, then I had to go ask my husband if he had a glove in his work truck. Uh, so that I could use it because there was no way I wanted both my hands full of gesso. There was no way. I just didn't feel like it. Now, I love to get my hands dirty sometimes. Not often, but sometimes I don't mind. But this time I did. So uh, he gave me one of his uh, gloves he had and I was off and running. The first thing you have to do is get an image up of a seagull. And that's what I did. I just uh, Googled it and got it up there. And, uh, you know, just so that I know what the eye is going to, you know, the colors and the feather colors. And I should know. They always hang around you. You can't feed them. If you feed them, they will be flying and landing on your head. I mean, they are no respecter of persons, my friend Seagulls. They will sit on your lap. I mean, they get so close to you, it's, it's crazy. So they ask you not to feed them. And uh, I see why, you know. So as I'm doing this, I remember a story. We were driving up to Thunder Bay up north. We lived up north, and we were here in, the, uh, in this area where we live now. Um, the farmhouse here was built by my husband's grandparents. So we used to come down and visit, and then we would stop. I would make a picnic, and the boys were young. And they loved to, we'd pull off the road and where there was a picnic table and have a picnic. And lo and behold, one day, uh, so many seagulls flew in. It was crazy. And one of them uh, had an accident on one of my son's, he his head. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was the funniest thing you ever saw. I mean, the seagull flew by and he did it right in the air. And it landed on my son's head. And my husband took him. <laughs> and we just went, you know, close to the water. Because it was by uh, Lake Erie. And we just grabbed, scooped up in the juice container. We had water. And we cleaned off the, uh, the glob of stuff that the seagull felt he had to leave a memory for my son. We never laughed so hard ever. Except for this time. So we're sitting at the picnic table. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I wanted this seagull to look vintagey, also with the little cracks and things. I didn't mind that. It looked really good. And I have to tell you that you're going to think this is crazy, but when, well, I'll get on with my story and then I'll tell you because it's a little farther up. So we were sitting there and the seagulls were flying and I was eating my lunch and so intense watching the boys that they didn't go near the water and stayed right close to us and whatever so I was focused and what does my husband do he comes from uh oh I'm just cutting off the feathers so they look more real realistic and what does he do he comes up behind me and pinches me I'm not gonna say where he pinched me but uh, yes he pinched me I flew off that picnic table and uh, my boys never laughed so hard in my life. It was worth the laugh, let me tell you. It was so funny. I thought one of the seagulls grabbed a hold of me, bit me, and wasn't letting go. And I took off running. <laughs> yeah, ooh, look at that. I love that seagull. That's what he's saying. Oh, he's my friend. What are you doing? Put his feather back on. What's the matter with you, Carol? He needs his feather. Look at what you're doing. Oh, I left the pinchy thing on that, too. Talking about pinches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I kept that pinchy thing on there, and, and I'll show you why later on in the tutorial. But anyway, that's a few happy memories of uh, our Dominion Day. I thought of that because I think that's why we were down. It was Dominion Day. And one of them was a seagull, um, you know, uh, making my son have a memory, 
and and my husband once again doing what he does best uh, making everybody laugh and he certainly did make me laugh after I calmed down <laughs> yeah. I was much younger then yes much younger then you know quick to say what I was thinking but <laughs> yeah anywho yeah just like why would you do that? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, right through the chest. So doesn't he do it all the time? That's okay. Yes, I love my little dog there. So I'm doing this because Hunter was here one time visiting. And he, I keep Silly Putty here. I have two containers of Silly Putty that I, I bought him for. He took two. I kept two. And I thought of the Silly Putty. And I thought, how am I going to make a beak for this seagull because seagulls have this strange beak. It goes out and then the top part of it curves a little bit. And I wanted this seagull to hold a rock in its beak because they always pick up stones in that. They eat them. And um, even birds in our laneway, like they come up and they love to eat stones. It's crazy. Don't they think they're going to get gall stones? I, I, <laughs> It just hit. I didn't say that purposefully. <laughs> gallstones, get it? <laughs> Seagull, gallstones. Anyway, I'm tired. Yes, this isn't even nighttime. <laughs> I'm having my own party here, my own Dominion Day party. I hope you join me. Yeah. So I didn't want my uh, bird to swallow this big stone, <laughs> so he didn't get, you know, uh, gallstones. I didn't want him to have a gallstone. So here's what I did. I took Silly Putty. Now, my friends, look in your stash. You can use anything. And I thought, well, I, I couldn't find my actual putty. I have a thing of three little containers of putty, but I, I didn't know where I put them. But I did know where I put the Silly Putty. And I formed myself a beak. And believe it or not, I sprayed it with glue and that beak... Once I got the stone in my little seagull's mouth, it stayed there and it, the form stayed true and dried true and I was really happy. And look it, it's orange. Can you get any sweeter than that, my friends? This bluebird, this sparkly bluebird that I found in my um, trunk is now going to be a happy seagull and this silly putty I mean think about it if it falls off it's gonna the seagull's gonna boing all over the room <laughs> have you ever seen silly putty when you throw it at each other it has a mind of its own and it's going wherever it wants to even though it's rolled in a ball and it looks like a perfectly good ball it just bounces everywhere and then if you flatten out silly putty and you put it on newsprint colored newsprint like cartoon colored newsprint it comes off on the silly putty it's so much fun for children to enjoy and see what Silly Putty actually does uh, on newsprint. It's fabulous. But right now, it's building a beak. <laughs> so thank you, Silly Putty. We get to have a Silly Putty beak. And uh, right, and it has the, the, the curl isn't on the bottom, Carol. The curl is on the top of part of the beak. So I get it down, and maybe I'll get it in the frame for you. I don't know. Call me crazy. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be doing here. Maybe I'll slow it down. Oh, there it is. Doesn't that look sweet? And then you have to kind of curl that little bottom beak a little bit. And then I have to go out into my laneway and get a few stones because I'm going to put stones. Oh, here's where I spray it with the E6000 glue. It's the spray glue. I'm going to give it a good spray just on its body because it dries with this really nice uh, sheen to it. I really like it, but I only want it on the breast of the bird. I didn't want it on the rest, just the breast, yes. And yeah, I don't want to stick all of the feathers together. That wouldn't be good. And yeah, there we have it. We have a bluebird that became a seagull. I love, I built up the eye so that the eye was in, oh, you just sprayed the eye. How are, how are you gonna see it? What are you doing, Carol? I never know what I'm doing when I'm doing an edit. I have to watch it with you. I have the screen up and I'm watching it. Yeah, it's a great tutorial when you don't see what you're doing. 
Oh yes, I paint, oh, I'm taking some of the glue off of the eyeball and I put some gesso up so that the eye was submerged into the face there a little bit into his cranium. And then I put a little yellow paint because I looked at the, we went for fish and chips while I was doing this tutorial. And I had up close and personal look at a seagull. And their eyes are black ring, yellow, and then a black little eyeball. It's fabulous. I'm just picking off some of the silly putty because I did paint their beaks are yellow, not orange. But I did want to leave a little bit of orange in there just for some, um, I don't know, vintage look. And, uh, you know, it wasn't done, you know, in, with perfection. I don't. I really love to just uh, make things look uh, somewhat realistic, but you know, the way that I create. I'm trying to move the Silly Putty because when the E6000 dries, the form is going to stay true, like I said before. So I'm really working this and I'll bend it over the little stone I put in its mouth. Oh, oh, that's a curly one. I don't want that curly one. Where are you going? Don't worry, I'm not biting it off. <laughs> that was gross, wasn't it? Yes. And anyway, let's go to something else while that's drying. Here's the book I bought. Okay. It's just an ordinary book. It has that ribbon on it, that boing boing stretchy ribbon. And, oh, of course, I had to show you, I picked up my favorite chocolate toffee by Coors. Two of them, actually. I put them in my craft room in case I need a nibble. And I always get a few uh, cashew things. They're by the till. Who puts this kind of stuff for people like me right by the till? Of course I'm going to buy it. It's right there in eye's view, and I'm always hungry. So, anyway, I'm going to grab one while I'm doing my project, and I'm going to, oh, it's the best toffee, and inside it has that beautiful, rich chocolate. Ooh, you get the best of both worlds. And I haven't even opened. I had some mail come to me. Look at it. It's been sitting there for so long. I didn't get a chance to open it. I don't know why it, I left that in the edit, but I did eventually open it, of course. But I was working and I didn't have any time right then to see what was in there. So I'm just going to put this in my yap and carry on creating. Now, this, uh, what is, it's not ribbon, it's stretchy something or other, but I want you to see this. Okay, you open it up, you have all these tabs, all of these stick-on tabs, colored tabs to put in your, I'm, uh, wait till you see what I did with those uh, acetate, like real hard acetate pieces. You have all of that. Look at, you have a tuck spot and all of these pages I separated. I made my own separated pages and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I thought, well, maybe I should take that off. And then I thought, why? You're not going to see it. You're putting paper over top of it. It's really hard cardboard. That makes it even sweeter to decorate on. Then in my stash, I had this album for years, years, years. It's rice paper and homemade paper on the inside. I found it at a thrift store, and I stored this forever. I really, look at, I mean, if I, if I wasn't doing my own project, that would be beautiful, wouldn't it? But the rice paper was over top of this cane wood. It's like a cane. I can't even describe it so beautiful. I have not wanted to touch this forever. And then I thought, no, it's time to break free. And I wanted to use that stick. I could have went out and got one off a tree. I mean, a limb off a tree, that would be no problem. I have many of them. I have so many chestnut trees and maple trees. And uh, on our property, I could have gotten a twig, of course. But I loved this. So I got my cutting knife and I... Close my eyes. Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> Can you imagine a project when you're closing your eyes? I cut off the binding, uh, that the spine, and it has the rope. It just screamed seaside to me, this collection. So look in your stash. Look at your secondhand stores. If, you, if they're open now, I don't know. I stopped 
thrift store shopping because I just have too much. I stopped that a long time ago. I used to go and get the bridal gowns, remember? And I used to buy them up with the head pieces and then cut off all of the beautiful appliques off of the dresses and the beadwork and all that stuff. But now I am, you know, I am supplied probably to the next generation with product. I don't want anything else. So we'll keep it at the thrift stores for somebody else. That's my story for that. Look at this rice. These are leaves, my friends. This is leaves put on this book. And they really did a good job with uh, sewing in the, uh, whatever you call it there. Let me just, I'm going to take this apart. I have to take it apart. And uh, I do have the cinch. So I could put it back together if I destroyed it, but I'm pretty good. I just grabbed my pokey tool and there, gave it a start so I could get my chubby little finger in there. Then I opened it up, took all the pages out, and we'll work on every side of this book creating using this beautiful summer release. Making page covers for the inside to separate, you know, like soups, uh, sandwiches, uh, fish fries, uh, all the different sections that I made for whoever gets this album. Oh yes, this cuts beautifully. This paper, it's not even, well it is paper, but it is um, bark and they use leaves right inside. I thought of Hawaii for some reason, these big rice cake leaves. It is so intricate. It was hard for me to cut it up, it was. But I had to have it for the recipe book. I mean, it's called Seaside Recipe Book. So see the leaves on this? And it's so fine. You can see the, the way the spines are in the leaves. It's gorgeous. I did spend a lot of time on just staring at that. So once you have this cut off or you get a piece of cardboard, you can just intertwine a twig and put some um, rope that you have in your stash and do the exact same thing. It just so happened that I had it in my stash and I was making a fish recipe book. Everything, all recipes you want to put in there with using uh, fish or you know whatever recipes you like, lobster, crab, all the things that are in the paper are going to be represented in my recipe book. But today, I just wanted to show you the cover. Then, and it was hard as I was doing the edit, yes, to not show, oh, my birdie's looking at it. Yeah, it goes together. Oh yeah, I'm happy. It was hard for me because I had to take out, I have the album completed. So before I put it together, I had to not show the all of the sides to the like the other side of the cover that I did. So anyway, we'll see that. And I tried to use every single stamp in this recipe book. Every one. I, I, I'm just so mesmerized by it. I think this is before I got the dies. They came in two separate orders. So um, yeah, I'm just thinking, okay, what do I want to put on there? Which of these, uh, oh, it was hard to choose, do I want to use? See, I was working on um, the inside portion, so I don't know why I have this. Look at that. I love this with the fish going round and round. I do have a card using that. I have a card using everything, so not only the inside, outside, upside down of the cover, I made cards with all the other stamps and dies. Yes, and uh, I can't wait to share them. So here we go. I'm trying to figure out now what will the cover of this look like? And the stamp set that I use that it's huge. It's gorgeous and it's photopolymer which Angie does top quality photopolymer. Oh here we go. Zyron to the rescue. I love using it for paper. So I got out the granddaddy one and come on, cut it off. And then I am going to put the paper down. I don't know why I slowed this up. 
but I don't want to mess up the edit like everything is on there so you just have to watch me doing whatever I'm doing here I'm just closing it up probably dusted off or probably did before I showed you and uh, it doesn't matter to me whether I show you or I don't then I'm gonna put it back up on the shelf yes off it goes so I have gold paper oh <laughs> on this day we it was so hot outside so I ran and got everybody they um, we were uh, power washing the house and everybody was so hungry so I ran to Wendy's and got uh, us meals to got us. Is that a word? Got us? I got us some grub to eat. We was hungry. Yeah, so that's why the pop there, it was a Wendy's pop. So I'm going to put gold down. You know, I have to put some gold in my projects. Look how easy that came up. And this is uh, inexpensive paper, gold, shiny paper. I just folded it over the sides. And isn't it wonderful to just use the Xyron, like how quick and easy it is? And you don't figure out this stuff till later on, my friends, if you've been crafting a while, trying to get all the easy peasy things of creating down. So you don't have to go through the agony of going the long route when there is a short route to take, right? Now, using this gold paper, you're going to want to make sure, and using the Xyron, that you really give it some good uh, pressing. Or you can, you know, sometimes I will use the uh, liquid glue on it. But uh, you want to make sure it doesn't come up because it will bubble the paper you put over top. And that's not going to look good. So navy. Now, if you're working with Seaside Anything, the Navy Hybrid Ink. And can I express that when I stamped with this Hybrid Ink, it is so juicy and so wonderful. I just used my stamp press. I didn't even have to go to the positioner because the Hybrid Inks at LDRS Creative are fantastic. Yeah, find that word in your dictionary. <laughs> It's over the top fantastic. So that word, yeah, that's a, that's a word. It's a Carol word. You know, I use them all the time. My dictionary is different than Webster's dictionary. So, um, yeah, let's move on. You can see that here I did not have my new Empress, my Anna Griffin Empress die cutter. It came on Monday. I haven't even taken the plastic off of it yet, but I will because I do want to play with it, showcase it, and tell you some things about it but this is not the video to do that this is my LDRS creative design team project so I went to another die in the LDRS creative line of gorgeous dies and I decided to use this particular die I'll leave the links of course on my blog I decided to use this on each of the panels of the book so I will cut die cut four of them for the front, the inside, the back cover, and um, yeah. So I die cut them, and that's what I'm going to use as my design page. That's going to be my focal image. So I needed to have them set aside. And if you know LDRS dies, may I say it again, they're Teflon coated. They will cut passing it through your die cutting machine with ease. And I love them. And I love going back to other um, stamps and dies when I'm doing projects. And this one you can get. So I'll leave the link, of course. You know, I, I try to leave the link on my blog. I try to remember all of them. And here we go. I'm just going to secure the rope and the twig or branch here. Isn't that gorgeous? Doesn't that scream seaside? I can't help myself, you know, I repeat myself all the time. And yes, I do get super excited over my projects, uh, but I try to stay in my chair. I try to stay focused. I don't jump all over so everything flies. Well, once in a while, I guess I do, but I tried not to on this one. Don't worry about the fact that the papers are six by six and your project is larger. You just cut another one and go for it because all you have to do is put a piece of paper to cover the seam and you're it. <laughs> is that all I do is think of food? 
I had my chocolate. Now I had to go downstairs and get me some strawberries, blueberries, and blackberries. Put a ton of sugar in it. <laughs> Look at the sugar on my spoon. Oh, my shattered nerves. That's, oh, just oozing sugar. Yeah, that's just what I need. But you know what? Gives you, right away, get, look at that blackberry. It gives you instant, um, the, the speed you need to get your tutorial done. <laughs> get up and go. And then you sleep well in about an hour because <laughs> the sugar wears off. Oh, my. Yeah, I had to get out. I had to add a little bit of silly putty to my beak. So bear with me here. Get it closed, Carol. Go put that away. So this is what's going to happen. My little bird, my seagull, err, err, err. See, I've got it down. I'm, I'm a seagull interpre interpreter. Uh, what do you call them? Ventriloquist. Err, err, err. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, people. Help me. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> If you want me to do any more impersonations for you, I will, yeah. Now we have to get my focal point in on the front cover. And yes, don't worry, the other tutorials aren't this long. I will make sure of that, that uh, because there's so much in this collection, it would be, you know, hours and hours and hours to get through all of the collection. Of course, the cards won't be as intensive as the covers, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm uh, not finished all the edits yet, so I'll do my best. I'll do my best. And so I took some purple tape. I am using this Seaside. Oh, yes. You've got to get more sugar. Yeah, Carol, let's have some Coca-Cola. There you go. Oh, now let's grab some. Um, I got this lately at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar because it's, it's uh, got more surface to the brush. And I thought of using that and using my brushes because I do get them there. But I changed my mind and I grabbed for my uh, glue, my spray gun, my aerosol gun, Copic gun, and turned on the compressor. And why not? Like, why not? Isn't that a beautiful brush for just that? Uh, oh, sorry. You know, that always happens when I do a tutorial. And I was thinking, should I do this? But I knew I had to use a lot of colors. I don't know. Maybe I did and I didn't air gun it. No, I did use the air gun. So, um, yes, I changed my mind there. So here's all the colors of the sea. I wanted to do it in the teals. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I was thinking of that uh, band, you know, that stretchy band. I ended up cutting that band off. I didn't use it. It really got in my way when I was putting the paper down and I didn't need it because it would have obstructed my seagull when, you know, uh, putting it on to hold the pages down. So I thought, no, that's got to go. My seagull is more important than a stretchy band. So that's what I did later on. And I will try and find the colors for you that I used. What I'm creating, uh, my friends, there's so much that you have. I forget to put the colors, you know, up. And then if I put the lids up, I end up knocking them down with my hand. They fall on the floor, and it's just crazy. So this is the easiest way. And then with this sticky tape, you know, with a stencil like this, it is a stencil, right? <laughs> I get my names all mixed up. Remember, acetate and vellum, I used to mix that up all the time. So I just pick it up. Uh, the purple tape is not really sticky, like, you know like some things are. And uh, so I keep looking at it. Oh, don't you love stencils? There's something about stencils that I have a fascination for uh, when you apply the color and lift it up, how beautiful it looks. It just looks beautiful. So I probably took out more colors than I had to use. Um, I don't know, maybe not because you know I love color and I love to put different things, but I didn't want this to really pop out. My main feature was my seagull. I'm gonna to have to think of a name for my seagull. Seaside seagull, how's that? Uh, oh, there comes that lighthouse stamp. 
love this. Did I get out? Uh, I don't know. Did I get out a positioner? No, I think I got the Tim Holtz positioner out because it doesn't have any edges on it. And I just really like it. I really like it. And LDRS Creative Cleaner, my friends, you have to have it in your stash. I have used other cleaners to clean off inks, okay? Uh, other than using, um, you know, that black ink there, your, uh, it'll come to me. But for your pigment, hybrid, all other inks, the Extreme Clean Stamp Cleaner, I will put a link, direct link for you, is a must. Everything comes off everything. It's the best cleaner ever on the market, I think. I'm just saying, you know, I use it all the time. I don't have anything else that I use. I, I really like it. I'm going to have to get another bottle too. I always forget uh, the little things like that, you know. But here we go. I'm going to stick down a little bit of tape on there just to hold it in place. Who knows what I'm going to do as I'm... Uh, yeah, see how easy that was to knock over? I tell you. And this one is going to be on the cover of beautiful navy. Now, to get a navy, I didn't use the real deep navy for some reason on this. I grabbed... Uh, this juicy hybrid ink and it's a beautiful blue but it's not the navy that I wanted so if you don't have a deep navy ink all you do is put a blue ink down and then a dark gray over top and you will get a nice navy just apply another color to your color and it all works out in a wash that's why I am used to experimenting with colors to get different colors whether they say they mix well or not, if it works in my book, I just go for it. And I love the stamp positioner, I have to say. You just have to make sure you have it on the clear side, right? So that it's, uh, the photopolymer stamp works, the clear stamps work properly. I always have to look at that too. I've done it the other way and wondering, why isn't this stamping? Well, because you're not doing it right, that's why. So let's get out some clear embossing powder and I'll leave the link to the LDRS Creative Embossing Powder both in white and clear. So here we go. I did the gray, then I did this navy. I will go back to the gray until I figure out. I, oh, I must have figured it out. I've got my clear embossing powder on it. I'm going to set it. I enjoy watching this process so much where it turns shiny. Oh, I could do it all day. Actually, I did. I did do it all day. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to keep your, uh, even though I do have a spinner and I have all my colored embossing powders there, I like to keep, um, oh, I'm putting my stone in little seagull's mouth there. Um, seaside seagull. Hey, Seaside. Yep, that's what I'm naming them. So if you end up being the one that receives this book, the seagull's name is Seaside. Seaside the seagull. Why not? Yes, everybody has to have a name, right? Yeah. I'm sure I've been called names. <laughs> you know, like uh, Happy, uh, Lovely. Uh, oh, brother. That's, that's, there it is. Woo, I just put it in the edit. That is that amazing, extreme clean it's called. Like I said, you'll have a link. Then I ran this through, and just grab a baby wipe. If you're using gray, you have to be careful with thin gold paper, though, because your nail or something you're using, if you press too hard, does leave, um, impressions into it that you don't want there and yeah so just uh, I think I added glute as well as the Xyron so yeah, there you go you're not going to see much of it when I get finished but still you need to cover that line doesn't that look pretty so far and this is the start of using the entire collection uh, that you can view over at LDRS Creative Shop. It's gorgeous. And 
you can see the papers, how beautiful they are. You can see that lighthouse is gorgeous. And I had to, I didn't have the dies then, but if I had to cut, when I received my dies, if I had to cut it, I already had it glued down and everything, so I couldn't do it. But the little door opens, the window opens, it is interactive. So if you order the stamps, I would love to try to get the dies to go with it. Um, but now I have it, so and I do use this and die cut it in another uh, project that I'm putting up. So I'm just going to say that it is an interactive die for this lighthouse. And look at all this stuff. I used everything on that page as we go through too. So I mean this cover... Oh, and the acetate, I'm going to make the cover a bevel. I can't do it right now, but at the end when I showcase the entire book, probably be next week by the time I get all these videos up, I do have a beveled acetate on top so that it just gives it a finished look and it covers my seagull so he doesn't get, you know, his beak doesn't get bent or the rocks don't fall off. I do make a beveled acetate front. And we will see that in there. Now here comes my little letters, my wooden letters. And it's called Seaside because that is the name of the collection. Seaside, of stamps I'm using, recipe book. That doesn't overtake anything. Isn't that gorgeous? I was going to put an anchor on the bottom. But I thought, no, I, I just have to leave it so that uh, Seaside Seagull is a focal point and my gorgeous gorgeous lighthouse that that's the focal point that stamp that's a must to have in a collection uh, seriously and the dies where everything opens the door the windows oh, this release is crazy beautiful so here we go uh let's see gesso you want to gesso it so that whatever medium you're putting over top will stay the test of time and there's my little stones. I went out and personally picked all the different sizes for on the front. I take my LDRS Creative Design Team projects very seriously. You know I do. I like to represent the company and Angie and you to see that this is a fantastic release. What I'm going to be doing this week and everything I put up is over the top fantastic. And I just love designing with everything. There isn't one thing that I thought, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. It all comes together. And if you don't, turn the stamp package or die package or stencil package over and you will have some inspiration. It's all there. It's all there. Yes. So, I, you know what? I started to do the inside of this. Uh, because I had to have, I'm just going to say, you have to punch these holes out with either your crocodile or just a dollar hole punch. That's what I ended up using because it's larger than the crocodile uh, hole. But every time you uh, went in on this, you had to take the guts out, right? Because you can't see to do the holes. So I had to put the paper on the one side, go with my crocodile, and make all of the holes in it so that when I put my next paper down on the inside I can see the holes because if I covered the front and the back I'm going to be going well, where's the holes I don't know what I'm supposed to do and then I'd have to go and get oh it would be a process let me tell you so this is easier just make the holes after your paper goes down from the one side then you can put the paper on the other side down doesn't take long and look at I get to use my pokey tools that I bought yeah I love it my hygiene pokey tools <laughs> oh, I did that in another video it's another story another time so here we go see how I tell you I use these pokey things all the time and I love that it's you know bent up on the angle like that I can get right into the crocodile so I do have to put this down on the inside so that I can finish working on the front side. Oh, I had to get it up. It was upside down. Yeah, make sure you watch that. When you're turning your page over, you want your designs to be right side up. Maybe you don't. But 
you know, if it's important to you, check it out. <laughs> That's all I've got to say about that. You know, I've had projects where I've had to leave my paper upside down. So, you know, we all do it and um, you can't help it. I try to cut and make it so it matches. I do try that. I do bring it over and mark it so that um, it coincides. But the thing is, I'm going to cover that seam, so it doesn't matter. Well, maybe it does on the up and down. I don't know. It's been a long time since I created this. So here I go once again, cleaning out the... Oh, I used a different tool. Oh, my. I have a lot of them now, so I guess I want to use them. And, oh, I'm not even cleaning it out. I'm taking a risk. Taking a risk. Because once you punch with this crocodile, the hole is there. There's no going back, my friends. Once you punch this down, you have got a hole. And it's there forever. It's wonderful. I love this thing. Who thinks up these things? Who wakes up and says, you know, I think I'm going to make a machine that cuts holes and I'm going to call it a crocodile. I don't know. It's never come to my mind. I've got to start thinking like that, though. Yes, because this is such a great invention. This We Are Memory Keepers crocodile. And now they make them with different uh, ends on it or something. I don't know. Believe it or not, I don't have all of them. I just have a couple. So um, there you go. So what I have to do now, this is what you do if you're going to color images, like letters, okay? Grab your runner, your double-sided runner. Then this is a double-sided piece of tape. And then put that down. And then stick your letters. Oh, the sticky's only on one side of this. That's why. Put your letters down on the sticky. That's why I needed to have the double-sided tape on the bottom, if that makes any sense. And I needed to form them because I'm going to do an ombre. I'm going to spray them with the Copic gun, and I'm going to have it ombre, light to dark. And so you want to make sure that they're even across, because I'm going to put paper over it and spray it. So I wanted to have three. I wanted a dark, a mid-tone, and a light. So that's why it's important for me to have the letters just right. As much, you know, they're not all the same height. Some are just a teensy bit off. But I did my best, and so it's going to say Seaside Cook a Recipe, no, Recipe Cookbook. Seaside Recipe Cookbook, I think it says. Oh, yes, I did have to have. Oh, I'm drinking White Welch's Grape Juice. That's good for you, right? It's got sugar in it, though, but it's delicious. Yes, I love the Welch's Grape Juices. I, bought, I buy the deep purple one and the white one. And I really love the, the white, yellow one. I'm looking at myself here. Okay, what am I doing? I start with dark. I remember that. Grab a piece of paper. You can do this very thing with your hybrid inks. You can just grab a piece of paper and then rub the bottom. Then I'm doing my mid-tone. And keep your pieces, parts. Like that's that the bottom of the Xyron. You know, that shiny thing that I'm using? So I keep that, and I'm using it for my hand so that I don't get too much of a mess. And now I'm going with the light. Kind of took it off there. It didn't matter. There you go. I actually do a gray over top of the blue that I used. I think in this, though, I had a deep, deep navy. I actually looked for one in my Copics. So here we go. I have to make sure the bevel is going to work with one sheet of 8.5 by 11, and it will. So I set that aside. That's how it's going to look. It's going to have a bevel. Now let's put everything together, my friends. If you're still with me, thank you so much. You really are going to love this collection. I'm going to leave the link to all of the design team members' projects. And Angie is on Tuesday evenings at 7 Eastern Standard Time and Thursdays at 7, and I'll leave all that info for you too. It's been so much fun watching Angie collect with her own products. It's fabulous, and she's on for an hour. It's great, and uh, there we go. 
I put my ATG runner in there, but I always use little drops, like little dots of glue, just as a, I don't know, just, what am I drinking now? I don't even know. I don't even know. My, I look, I look like I'm really thirsty, don't I? I tried to keep this not so sped up. I could have, you know, sped the whole project um, up, <clears throat> But then you don't get the process of it. And this is the first of many videos that are going to go up with this collection. After I get this up today, I will be working on getting an, another edit voiceover done so that I can put the next one on later or tomorrow morning, whenever I can get that completed for you. And every day I hope to have videos up for you. Every day. I want to get the entire collection used, of course. And I want, I wanted to use everything, everything, all the stamps, all the dye, everything to show you what you can do with this collection. Any part of it, they're all beautiful. You don't obviously have to buy the entire collection, but each one has a, plays a specific part. There's the stones, even that matters when you go out to pick your stones. I mean, you gotta pick the right stones. You have to have light, mid-tone, and dark, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I just went out there and got a whole handful, brought them in, cleaned them, and uh, I'm putting them on. So there you go. Let's get the seaside ready, and we are going to glue them with any type of good glue that'll hold this would be great. And does not look nice with the ombre and the lighthouse. Oh, Good night, Carol. You're doing an awful lot of drinking. <laughs> Good thing it's just pop, right? Yeah. Oh, grape juice. I did do grape juice. And I will do water. Uh, my sister and I went to a sale that they had in town here. I, sadly, the store has gone out of business because it just can't keep up the demand of um, product, people buying and things. I don't know. It's just sad to me when... I'm always sad when companies have to uh, close the doors. So my sister wanted to go, and uh, it's a dress store, like it's a shop, ladies' shop. And we actually, it's the first time I've ever stood in line for anything. But we stood in line for an hour and 25 minutes, an hour and a half. I couldn't believe it. But, you know, because it was her and I, I wouldn't have stood in line if I was by myself. I already went there and I already got a lot of clothes that I wanted for the summer. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't want anything. I just wanted her to look at this, this stuff and um, see if there was anything there for her. So she lives Niagara on the lake. So she drove down and we made it, you know, we had the afternoon together. So that was wonderful. And uh, yeah, why did I say that to say what? Um, I don't know. But anyway, I was telling her about the Seaside Recipe book, and she was all excited about that. <clears throat> My mom loved to uh, cook, so she would write down all of her recipes. She made all her own stuff, and, you know. She was from Newfoundland, so, you know, she got uh, fresh fish all the time out of the ocean there. Oh, yeah, she was a true Newfoundlander, a true Easterner, and um, I miss her dearly. So I'm going to dedicate this Seaside Recipe book to my mom. Yes, it just reminds me so much of her. She loved her fresh, her fish. She used to go tell us about going cod fishing and um, out in the boats, and yeah, she loved to fish. So here we are. I don't get that from Nowhere Strange, right? I grabbed some twine that kind of matched the twine that the, sea, the seaside sitting on here. I just tied some in a knot, kind of looked like a, tried to get it so it covered that pinchy thing on there. But see how I needed that pinchy thing? Because obviously that piece of wood is sitting up and the seagull's body is face down a bit more, so it worked out. So I got my hot glue gun out and we're going to glue this down, then I'm going to cut it off because I do want to see some of that uh, branch 
and it's coming together to look like a truly summertime seaside recipe book, isn't it? Using this collection. And I, the inside of this, oh my, I took one of the sets and used all of it just on the inside page. And that's where you're going to get inspiration, my friends, over on the design team. Uh, the way somebody can take a set, we all have the same set, but how we all have different outtakes. Our inspiration is all different. It's not the same. And we, you know, we use this in so many different ways. The way each of us think is represented. You know, our own personality comes out in each other's work. And I love it. Um, I, on my blog, I left uh, Leanne's project, one of them, on there. I left a link on my blog uh, yesterday, I think it was, or the day before. Anyway, it's there on my blog, and uh, everybody's so crazy talented. I, I'm truly amazed when you go on YouTube, all of the talent, the creative talent that's out there. You know, it can be very intimidating <laughs> to somebody like me, you know, to say, oh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can think up anything and everybody's got such beautiful projects up and but you know I set that aside I mean you, you do what you can do you don't have to worry about what somebody has up that's their interpretation of of what they feel they want to create with it it has nothing to do with with me I have to think up using my own cranium and um, come up with something that I think is a good usage of the stamp and die sets and that's what I did and I enjoyed the process and I had fun so what more can you ask for really just have fun don't worry about you know I said that to be facetious but uh, truly uh, you don't worry about it you just create to have fun and you won't believe how much it means to somebody else to receive something that you put your time into. It is so appreciated. It really is. And um, that's what it's all about. That's why crafters get along so well. We are all giving people because we on YouTube we give of our time. This is time uh, spent with you that I want to share these products because I, I love them. I enjoy creating with them and I think they are gorgeous. Now, I didn't have the dies yet. Remember that? Here's my Fiskars cutter. So I had to fussy. I looked at this and I said, what? What? I have to fussy cut this? This Fiskars one turns. You don't have to lift it up. I, I just didn't get it down on how it really works. You just put it in and then you turn your project. See, I should have kept it in my mat, kept it down and just turned the project. And that blade turns on its own. So I... I I, obviously, I haven't used it much. I don't like to fussy cut. My wrists find it hard. Look at my sunburn wrists. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That looks funny to me. It looks like I have two red bands on. So I was using my LDRS Creative Hybrid ink, the small little ones. You know what? I have gone through two black LDRS Creative inks. Two. Two small ones and one large one. I have to reorder. They, watch. I'm doing this a thousand times. I can't get any ink out of them. I had to go to another ink because I didn't have a black ink. I used it all. So that says something. That's how much I appreciate the hybrid inks. I used up all my blacks over time. So um, here I'm using cleaning them. And look at all of that comes off. Now, I use the baby wipes and I like to get in all the grooves, but I'm going to tell you, hybrid ink stains the black. You're not going to get these crystal clear like they were before, but when you clean it with this cleaner, oh, I'm just showing you. Okay, anyway, it's going to be clean when you stamp the next time, so don't worry about that. Don't worry if they have a little bit of color on them. If you've wiped them with that cleaner, that color is just embedded into your dye. And it just looks like you used it, and that's great. You don't want new dice sitting there or stamps. You want to use them. 
So I, I got over that, that I couldn't clean them meticulously. So here we go. I had to go back on here and make the holes larger because remember in my haul video I showed you this, um, what do they call that thing that makes the circles that go over top of the holes? That thingy. I always call it a thingy until it comes to my mind. So the crocodile didn't make the holes large enough. So I wanted to cover it with gold, of course. So here I got all of them punched out of really light cardstock. It was actually my wedding cardstock, that light stuff. Then I got out my gold, um, what do they call this stuff here? Oh, it's terrible. I put just normal um, white glue, just normal art glitter glue on top of my circles there. You can see me doing it. And then I took my foil, this gold imitation gold foil, and I put it over top because I did not want these totally covered. I wanted to get a vintage style look to my recipe book. Because the seagull, Mr. Seaside there, he does, he has little uh, lines in them, you know, that he looks like he's handmade. I wanted this to look vintage and handmade. So I just put glue, took my vintage gold papers uh, foil here that you buy. I think it's the Mona Lisa foil. And I put it on top of the glue. Then I'm going to take a brush. It is uh, a shaving brush I end up using because the bristles are coarser. Are coarse. I don't know if coarse is a word, but they're nice and coarse. So it, it released it for me. So it wasn't I wanted to see some of the white. I did not want it to be perfect. I wanted it to look aged, and this did it for me. Yeah, that was my husband's shaving brush. <laughs> I took that a couple of years ago. <laughs> he had to go get a new one. Uh, where's my shaving brush? I don't know where I put that thing. I said, I think you put it up in my um, craft room. <laughs> yeah, that did happen. That's I put it in your craft room. Yeah, and I've been using it, so I wouldn't use that. Who knows what I have put that thing in. We're going to have to go and get another one. <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time if I see something. I don't take it out of his work truck, though. I have to I have to ask him about that because you don't want to be on a job and go out to get something and, you know, your wife has taken it for a craft. That wouldn't be good. No, I wouldn't be happy if somebody just came up and started taking all my stuff. And because they thought they needed it, and then I go to make something, and I, I, I'm there. Oh, I lost that again. I don't know where I put it. Yeah, so you want to be mindful of that. I'm even taking some off with my nail. Look at that. I really do want that vintage, just a little bit of gold touching this. Because I do have gold paper on that, and you know I love gold. So that's how I got it, the vintage. And I used my uh, punch. And I call it my hole covers. <laughs> I can't think of the name. But anyway, there you go. I tried not to get the side, the inside of this showing as I picked it up. I had to run back and take it out of the edit because I did show you. So anyway, thank you. Have a blessed week as always. Please check out all the links I leave over on my blog of all the inspiration that is showcasing this wonderful summer collection. And I look forward to many videos going up for you and the fun that I spend here in my craft room. I hope you enjoy it at the other end. So I put some pictures up for you to enjoy and I will see you in your comments and on the next project. There you have it. Take care.